Hi, Doug Knoll here on how to control your emotions as a woman. I approach this topic as a feminist. The most important thing that I want you to take away from this video is you don't control your emotions with suppression or repression. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Instead, I'm going to share three key practices that will make you emotionally self-aware and authentic. There are two problems that women face as I see it. Problem number one is the myth of rationality. We've been lied to for 4,000 years as human beings. We've been told by philosophers and theologians that what makes us human is rationality. And women have borne the brunt of this lie. And this big lie, that humans, men in particular, are rational beings. And that's what separates us from other animals. You can see this going all the way back to Plato in the Phaedrus, when Plato wrote that Reason and emotion were two horses that the charioteer was trying to control, even though they were pulling in different directions. And the whole idea was the conscious mind is trying to control emotions and subdue them. And this idea of rationality permeates Western philosophy and permeates our culture today. Immanuel Kant, the philosopher, the German philosopher in the 17th century said, emotio is bad, ratio is good, emotions are bad, rationality is good. And so we have this cultural belief that emotions are weak, they're vulnerable, they're evil, they're irrational, and it's all plain wrong. The truth of the matter is that there is no such thing as rationality. This is a myth that has been perpetuated for centuries. Neuroscience today tells us that we are 98% emotional and only 2% rational. So that's the first problem, the myth of rationality. The second problem is that many men think they are less emotional. They like to think of themselves as rational beings and believe that women are more emotional than they are. Well, these men are wrong. Men are just as emotional as women, if not even more so. But why all this BS? Why do men hide behind rationality? Why does our culture deny us? our true inheritance of our emotional being. Why all of this BS? Well, it's because of a lack of emotional safety. For thousands of years, up until today, very few human beings grew up to be emotionally safe. I think that most emotional safety ends in our lives at around five or six years old. And then we're told to toughen up, and we're told to suppress our feelings, and we're, we're shamed or punished for feeling emotions. We are emotionally invalidated. And as a result of that, we suppress our emotions. We build walls around us so that we don't feel our vulnerability. We don't feel the pain. And this lack of emotional safety is at the root of many mental illnesses and a lot of dysfunctional behavior and failed relationships. But the big secret, don't try to control your emotions. Instead, become self-aware of your emotions. And I'm sure you've heard and read this, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to tell you exactly how to do this. There are three steps to becoming self-aware. Not difficult, but it does take some practice. Step number one, start paying attention to the emotions around you. And there are a couple of exercises that you can engage in to help you do this. First, watch a movie scene with the sound turned off and take out a piece of paper and a pen and count how many emotions you see and write those emotions down. Second, name the emotions in a radio spot. You listen to a radio advertisement and see how many emotions you can pick out of the spot. In a typical 20 second spot, I usually count 10 to 12 emotions that are being expressed behind the scene. And another great practice is in public places. Watch the people around you, do some people watching. So you can be at a mall or an outside square, someplace where people are gathering, but watch their emotions, not them themselves. Just what are the emotions that they're experiencing? And the more you engage in these three practices, the more your brain will become attuned to the emotional experiences of other people, and the more you will slowly become emotionally self-aware of your own emotional states. You can use this wheel of emotions to help you. And you can see that there are some basic emotions in the center of the wheel. And then in the next circle out, they become a little bit more granulated until we finally get to the outside circle and the emotions are highly granulated. Start with the basic emotions in the center 
and just see how many of those you can spot in movie scenes and radio spots and then watching people on the outside. And then see how well you can granularize the emotions with practice as you move to the outer two circles. Work with those, move to the next ring, and you will develop emotional safety as you develop your own emotional self-awareness, as you become comfortable reading emotions. Step number two, learn how to label other people's emotions. This is a three-step process that I'm only going to briefly describe, but this is how you label other people's emotions. Number one, ignore their words. Their words have no meaning when you're listening to emotions. Number two, read the emotional data fields. You've already been practicing that if you've been watching the t movies or, and the radio spots and watching people outside. So this should be very easy for you at, at this point in your practice. And then number three, the secret sauce. Reflect back the emotions with a simple you statement. Now I could go on and on and on about why you use a you statement, not an I statement. Let me just say that the use of I statements and active listening is wrong. There's no science to support it. It's all based on a misunderstanding of psychologist Thomas Gordon's work in the 1950s and 60s. He was the guy that coined the term active listening. And it doesn't work. You statements work. If you want more information about that, you can contact me or you can take my basic emotional competency course and learn more about that. Or I've actually got an article on this on my website that you can read to understand all of the science behind this. Step number three. Label your own emotions. And you're going to do the same thing, except you're not going to ignore your own words, but you are going to let yourself feel and experience your own emotions, and then you're going to name them using the, the wheel of emotions that you just saw a moment ago. And start trying to get yourself to be as granular as you possibly can during the day. At any given time, just think to yourself, what am I feeling right now? What emotional experience am I having? And use the wheel of emotion to get as granular as you possibly can. And over time, this will develop your emotional self-awareness. Well, there's a lot more to learn. So stay tuned to this channel. If you would like a copy of the Circle of Emotions, email me at doug at dougnoll.com. So my name is Doug Knoll. I'm a lawyer turned peacemaker. I'm an author, speaker, trainer, teacher, and visionary. I'm co-founder of the Prison of Peace Project with my colleague Laurel Coffer, where we train lifers and long-termers to be mediators and peacemakers in maximum security prisons. And I'm dedicated to helping people like you live fulfilled lives. I offer individualized training and coaching to a select group of clients. If you'd like to set up a call to explore the possibilities, email me at doug at dougnoll.com. And sign up for the basic emotional competency course at dougnoll.co slash emotional dash competency. If you liked this video, give me a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time.